There we go. Nice one. Nice one. Heck yeah. Look at that. Good attitude boy, they are porky. Porky little pot bellies. And right now, the water temps at Allen and I are fishing are in the mid 50s. And that is the absolute peak period for jerk bait. Now here in uh, probably a week or so, the water will get, get to be about 60. These big girls right here, they'll go to bed. Big boys and girls, they'll go to bed. And I, I was in Toronto this last winter. Jimmy and I were doing a, a seminar on muskies and smallmouth with a few other guys. And Gord Pizer gave one of the most fascinating talks I've ever heard about smallmouth. Some of the research that's been going on and also what happens when these fish go to bed and when you target fish on the beds and the results it can have on the overall population. So I want to share with you some of the results that Gord had found out through some of his research. You'll find it fascinating. Here's a tiny nugget of great smallmouth conservation information Gord Pizer shared in the seminar I heard and in a blog for Outdoor Canada, highlighting research from Dr. David Phillip from the Illinois Natural History Survey at the University of Illinois. For some background on spawning behavior, male smallmouth choose nesting sites and prepare the nests. Females lay eggs and leave while the male fertilizes them and provides protection until the eggs hatch and the fry reach a certain size. While the male is tending to the next generation, he'll defend the nest at all costs. Dr. Phillip has researched how anglers impact smallmouth recruitment by fishing for them on nests. The results clearly show fishing for nesting smallmouth has a negative effect on the year class success. In one of his experiments, he used four restricted access lakes with eight successive years of management practices. In one management practice, there was no fishing allowed during the spawn, and in the other, catch and immediate release was practiced. The results were catch and immediate release management had a significantly lower recruitment than when there was no fishing pressure on nesting smallmouth. There's a ton more to this story, but I'll have to save it for later. Smallmouth are amazing fish, and the more you learn about them, the more amazing they are. Bottom line is, next time you hit the water and are around nesting bass, catching them, even if you immediately release them, has a negative impact on the next generation of bass. And if you tournament fish for smallmouth on nests, know that every bass you put in your live well does not stand a chance to contribute to the next generation of bass. Thanks, Gord, for bringing this issue forward, and thanks, Dr. Phillip, for your incredible research. Hopefully, this insight will encourage more anglers to leave smallmouth alone when they're spawning and ensure our next generation can enjoy another great generation of smallmouth.